My name is Brian Taylor with the North and South Rivers Watershed Association. The North and South River Watershed Association, or NSRWA for short, is a local South Shore grassroots nonprofit whose mission is to preserve and protect the water for people and for animals now and for the future. Today, you are joining us for a really special program called Fish School, which stands for Fostering Innovative Science Through Herring Counts in School. In this program, we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at this really cool species called river herring. We're gonna learn about their importance, we're going to learn about why we should care about them, and we're going to learn a little bit about what we can do to help them. This program, Fish School, is uh, brought to us by the Battelle Organization. Battelle is a global research and development organization committed to science and technology. Through this support, we're able to bring the river to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into our local rivers, and we're going to check out this really cool species called river herring. River herring is a collective term given to two species of fish we have here in the South Shore, blueback herring and alewives. A species that we're not going to be talking about is Atlantic herring, which is a common species of fish that you can find in your grocery store. Between these two fish, alewives and blueback herring, there's not a lot of visible difference. In fact, the easiest way to differentiate between the two species is by having to dissect them. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to do that. So I'm gonna go through and talk a little bit about each species in particular. To start, let's talk about alewives. The alewives, or Alosa pseudoharangus, are the larger of the two species. They have a deeper belly than that of the blueback herring, and they can grow up to about 16 inches. They spawn in ponds and slow-moving streams. They prefer still or slow-moving water as opposed to faster-moving streams. One female can deposit up to 100,000 eggs, and they prefer colder temperatures at about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Their range is predominantly northern Canadian Maritimes all the way down to North Carolina. Obviously, the South Shore area fits right in the middle there. Alewives are some of the first species of herring to start migrating up our waterways in spring. So if you go out to a waterway near you and you're looking for fish, some of the first fish that are gonna start to come up are most likely gonna be alewives. The second species that we're gonna talk about is blueback herring, or Alosa escivalis. These species are a little bit smaller than the alewives, and they typically have a bluish or greenish color on their backs, hence their name, blueback herring. They typically grow up to about 12 inches, so a little bit smaller. They like to spawn in faster moving water, and one female can lay up to around 30,000 eggs. They prefer warmer water, typically no lower than around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, and their range is around southern New England all the way down to Florida. So they're a little bit more of a warm water fish. Believe it or not, in the springtime, here in the South Shore, happens to be one of the most amazing and remarkable migrations in the area. These river herring are starting to work their way from the ocean up streams through your town to spawn in headwaters, ponds, tributaries, far up as they can go. This process is called anadromy. Anadromy, or anadromous fish, are fish that spend most of their life out in the ocean, feeding, growing, and then migrating up these streams, up these rivers and these tributaries to spawn and lay their eggs. It's pretty incredible. Unlike familiar species that we see all the time, like salmon, these fish, river herring, don't die after they lay their eggs. They'll lay their eggs in these freshwater streams and tributaries and then migrate back out to the ocean, hopefully after another year, to lay eggs again. Why do they leave the bountiful food sources in the ocean to travel upstream to lay their eggs? That's a really good question. Well, the answer is because of safety. These fish spend most of their lives out in the ocean and then work their way up into the freshwater streams to lay and deposit their eggs where they're safe. The ocean is not a safe place for small eggs or little fish to be swimming around. So that's why these fish will actually leave all that food from the ocean and travel upstream. It's pretty incredible. However, river herring do not eat on their migration, okay? So when they are working their way upstream, they're not eating. Their sole mission is to get as far upstream as they can and lay their eggs in a suitable location to give their eggs and their baby fish the best chance of survival. Those eggs take about two weeks to hatch. Those juvenile fish are gonna spend summer and a little bit into fall in fresh water 
feeding and growing. And then when they're ready, in fall, they're going to swim and migrate back out into the ocean. In addition to the very important role river herring play to our ecosystems, that connection between the ocean and freshwater ecosystems, river herring also play a very important historical role as well. Many of us remember the stories we would hear about how the native Wampanoags helped teach the new pilgrims how to use river herring to help fertilize their crops, including corn. Many of our local towns have specific herring runs or herring run parks where you can see river herring in action as they're migrating upstream. Some towns have herring festivals where they celebrate the historical significance of river herring and their arrival in spring. With river herring and their migrations, we're often focused on the endpoints, the ocean or the ponds and tributaries upstream. But what we don't think about is the miles of estuary that these fish have to go through. In and around here, the South Shore, we have the North and South River estuaries. This is where the fresh and the salt water meet. And all an estuary is, is where the fresh water meets the salt water. It's where the river meets the sea. And here in the South Shore, we are fortunate enough to have a couple really cool and fascinating estuaries. Estuaries where we can go and watch river herring. Unfortunately, river herring's journey is not easy. They're working so hard to try to get upstream to spawn and lay their eggs, and they're encountering many issues along their way. One of the biggest issues that herring face are dams, man-made obstructions that prevent them from migrating upstream and continuing their journey that they need to do to spawn. If you go and explore some of your waterways around your town, you might see some man-made dams there. A lot of these dams were made historically for mills, for factories, for important things for, for people and their survival. But unfortunately, a lot of these dams no longer serve a purpose, and in fact, some of them are actually becoming hazardous and dangerous. It is unfortunate that a lot of these dams, which no longer serve a purpose, are preventing fish from continuing upstream to spawn. Another issue that river herring face is something called water withdrawals. Water withdrawals is where we are over consuming water. We're using a little bit too much water. And unfortunately, a lot of this has to do in the summertime when we have a lot of our sprinklers going for our lawns. This is the leading cause in overconsumption of water here in the South Shore. Another issue that river herring face is water pollution. Overuse or irresponsible use of fertilizers and pesticides can cause issues for river herring for their water quality and for the water quality that their eggs and juvenile fish need to survive in. Habitat degradation is also a issue that river herring face as a lot of their habitat, their spawning habitat, the areas that they need to lay their eggs has been changed in a way that is not suitable for them to survive in. An issue that river herring face when they are out in the ocean is overcatching or bycatch. What bycatch means is that river herring are accidentally caught or they are mistakenly caught uh, in hopes of catching another species. So unfortunately, when nets go out, sometimes river herring can get caught up in those nets. And also unfortunate is that river herring, when they are out in the ocean to uh, ensure their safety, they swim in schools and sometimes a net can scoop up an entire school of river herring, which is too bad. So as you can see, we've got the fish ladder on the right, and then on the left, we've got uh, a spillway. You can see those herring right now uh, are making their way up both, except they can only get so far here at the spillway, which is unfortunate because herring, they cannot jump. They can't jump like salmon. You know, we see those scenes of salmon jumping up those waterfalls in Alaska and getting grabbed like grizzly by grizzly bear. The river herring can't do that. They need what is called a laminar flow. They need a solid column of water that is moving to work their way up through. And as we can see, some of the herring are going up the fish ladder. Some of them are not. They're getting stuck here at the spillway and they can't get up any further. Hopefully those herring will turn around and head back up the fish ladder. The river herring are attracted to that rippling of water, the churning, the, the, the bubbling, all that, that white water. That's what they're attracted to. And unfortunately, sometimes all that whitewash and all that is not where the fish ladder is. And so a lot of times they get stuck, which is what we see all throughout the watershed, not just here. But luckily, a lot of fish do make it through. They make it up to Whitman's Pond and or the pond that they're heading to. Whichever watershed you might be in, they can uh, hopefully make it there and spawn uh, and thus keep the population going year after year. So who cares about river herring? Why should we care? Who cares if they all just disappear? 
Well, there's a few reasons for that. River herring are known as a keystone species, meaning that they help support the broader ecosystem both in the ocean and in the estuaries. River herring, being an anadromous fish, help bring that energy, that nutrients from the ocean into our freshwater tributaries and streams. By migrating through our estuaries, they are linking two major important ecosystems, the ocean saltwater ecosystem and the freshwater ecosystem. Without river herring, we would see a major collapse both in the ocean and in our freshwater ecosystems. Since I mentioned that they are a keystone species, their survival supports lots of other animals above them. Remember that whole food web thing? Yeah, if we removed river herring from that, we would see the whole food web start to fall apart because so many other animals depend on their survival. And remember, humans are also part of that food web. Okay, river herring's journey is not easy and they face a lot of issues. However, it's not all doom and gloom. There are some really cool positive things that are happening. In fact, one of the reasons why you're here is to have a positive outcome on the overall success of these river herring. Much work has been done in and around the South Shore in removing these old defunct barriers and dams that block their way. 22 dams have been removed since 2002, which restored 16 miles of natural stream flow on the South Shore. Every little bit helps. Many people are recognizing the importance of herring and taking steps to help their population. You can help too. Through citizen science programs, like the program that you are taking part in right now, will help us understand populations, monitor trends, and help the overall success of river herring, a vital keystone species to our local South Shore ecosystem. So with that funding uh, from Battelle, we, in collaboration with the state's Division of Marine Fisheries, uh, as well as the town of Marshfield, we're able to install a underwater camera here to follow and track heron as they go through. So, when you go online to our website and click to watch heron, there's a good chance that you're gonna see footage from this very spot. As the heron come up through this fish ladder, right here at Veterans Memorial Park here in Marshfield along the South River, the heron come up through here and pass right in front of a little camera, which you can go online and see because we want to know when we see herring, but we also want to know when we don't see herring. Both of those are important. So if you go online and you count and you don't see anything, that's also uh, important to know. We need to know when we are and when we're not seeing herring. Uh, so, so go online and check it out. By participating in citizen science programs like this, you are helping us better understand river herring, their populations and their trends in order to help maintain a vibrant, healthy river ecosystem. Next, we're gonna take a look at local herring runs in and around your towns so you can see river herring in action in your communities. Until then, my name is Brian Taylor with the North and South River Watershed Association. We will see you out on the river.